Renowned as America's oldest continuously operating farmer's market, the Pike Place Market is an historical district with a voter-approved mandate to meet residential and social service needs of low-income market neighbors. Behind and above the commercial bustle of the market are over 400 dwelling units, a child care center, food bank, and senior center, and the Pike Market Medical Clinic. Since its abrupt beginning in the Motherlode Tavern on First Avenue in 1978, the Pike Market Medical Clinic has never wavered in its mission to serve the low-income residents of downtown Seattle. The clinic was begun to meet community health needs and the social service mandate of the Pike Place Market written into its historic charter. The clinic has done this job for more than two decades, and last year, the little clinic that could provided 23,050 visits to 3,611 people in need. Who are the people, the patients behind those numbers? Clinic patients are retirees living on fixed incomes, laid off workers, the farmers and artisans who are so much the character of the Pike Place Market, people who struggle with mental illness and chemical addiction, people living with HIV, AIDS, people who have been and who are abused yet fight on and work towards healing. The clinic provides basic medical care as well as pharmacy and lab services, mental health counseling, social work help, and drug and alcohol counseling. This year alone, the clinic will give away $500,000 worth of care to people who can't pay. Providing health care to a population with few resources is at the core of the clinic's purpose. In a national historic landmark, the clinic preserves the living history of Seattle. Former Mayor Charles Royer has said, the Pike Place Market is the heart of Seattle, and the Pike Market Clinic is the heart of the market. I first came to the Pike Market Clinic in April of 1983, and I came here under emergency circumstances. I had for 25 years not been able to eat solid food because of an esophageal um, obstruction. So I had lost my 25 year fight to live. You can't take people's belief systems away, right. I think. I, mean, I, I have my belief systems. They sometimes coincide with patients, but not necessarily, and we have to work together to, you know, to come to a conclusion that's, uh, that's helpful mm -hmm. with them. Now, on November of this year, I'll be 75 years old, and I realize that like an old uh, uh, car, your parts are wearing out, and uh, they can't give you a new heart or a new stern, uh, but they'll patch it up so you'll stay afloat and keep moving. I was working in the market. Maybe somebody told me, go on up to the clinic. It's uh, hard working. It's uh, diligent. It's full service. I should tell you that I also go to two other clinics because I accompany some minors who are not, not I guess, uh, we, since we don't treat children yet. And so I have an occasion to go to other clinics. So I know the difference between the clinics more than other patients. And I can tell you that uh, we have uh, very, very good service compared to other clinics. One day I cut my finger and it was a little worse than a Band-Aid type cut. So I came up to the clinic and uh, they of course took care of it. Before they took care of it, they took my blood pressure and uh, Carol looked at me and said, you sit right there, Lloyd, don't move. And she went and got Dr. Heller. And my blood pressure was quite high. And uh, I've been coming back here ever since. People, when they come to the clinic uh, in the first place, they know that they have a place to come to where the doctors and the nurses listen to them. Um, many of our patients have mental problems besides physical problems. I was having a problem with my feet and uh, 
So I came down to the clinic and asked them if I could become a patient down here. And uh, they were very kind to me and very understanding. I thought I did everything they possibly could to help me, as they have now for the past six years. Well, I was working at the uh, produce stand in the sanitary market building there, and I was a clinic, I'm a clinic patient already. I had come to the clinic for my health care, um, so I'd been working in the market since 73. And Cecil Frank, the, one of the nurses back at the clinic then, said, hey, we're forming a board for the market clinic. Would you like to be on a board? And I said, ooh, I've never been on a board. She goes, oh, come on, we just need some energy. You can do it, you can do it. So that's how I started. I, I, got, I became a board member in April of 1978. A city is not simply uh, uh, a, a region comprised of wealthy people or people whose lives are going smoothly and who have homes and who have good jobs and who have uh, 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 dependable uh, and, and healthy uh, living situations. Uh, cities in our time, sadly, are also places where there are a lot of people who are uh, living uh, lives of extraordinary economic insecurity. Uh, many, many people, increasingly so, are, are homeless. Uh, increasing numbers of people are finding it impossible to maintain even the most modest home uh, while working a 40-hour work week. In an environment like that, uh, which hopefully, again, uh, will not remain the same forever, and I'm hoping for a more humane and more socially conscious society in the future. But in the meantime, uh, the Pike Market Clinic and our sister clinics provide a tremendous service and uh, needed service to ensure the, uh, uh, the, the, the lives of a significant number of people who wouldn't have medical care and social services if we weren't here. actually tr tried to meet um, the needs of a population that weren't mm -hmm. traditional users of community clinics, which in those days so often were known as free clinics, and we never called the Pike Market Clinic free clinic because, oh, in fact, older people didn't like that term. It discounted it. So we had regular docs. We got regular docs. Regular docs, and even even the free free part of it. I mean, people didn't like. I mean, the whole concept of having something free was not right. something that was acceptable to right. that population. Right. So we actually had a fee for, for everybody. Right. And I remember that it, w it was about so much more than just treating people's health problems, that it really was about build, maintaining and building a sense of community. That was our most radical act of actually convincing the feds that the downtown of Seattle, the most populated doctor area in the Northwest, was an underserved, that poor people were underserved, right, in a big that there weren't enough it. docs to take care of it. And that was actually infuriated the medical society, infuriated. We decided not to wait until we could uh, build a space across the alley, and they actually opened up the clinic in an old tavern. I think it's the only time in America that a, uh, a health care organization that's now an institution uh, began in uh, the back room of a tavern. And that was really always, it was always my calling to, to be a doctor for people who couldn't get one easily. I didn't really want to be in a big complex where people could pick me or go down the hall, pick somebody else. And I, want, I had a greater sense of purposefulness or purpose in in providing medical help for people who otherwise couldn't get it. When I first came, uh, the clinic had a, uh, a budget of 350000 Today we have over two million. We were the first clinic to have foot care, and it was a staple. It's a staple. I mean, it's no, it a is. fundamental it act. Is. You know, you're just like, you're not going to be walking if you can't take care of your feet, and how many people were totally isolated by that process was right. just the simple things. The structure of health care is so distracting, and in fact, what, what brought people here is the, the realness of needs and the, and the ability to do something real for people rather than have to, you know, work the structure and the politics of a large organization, but actually be close to people. <laughs>